Welcome back to the 128KB podcast, your weekly dose of all things gaming and mainly our faces together. (laughs) And our voices. Our voices coming in your ears. Oh, lovely. (laughs) Yes. Uh, We've got an exciting show lined up for you today. We do indeed. Where basically we're just going to talk about things that we like. Yeah. But before we get started, Mm. uh, I want to show you something. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Go on. Go on. Get it out. Oh, look at that. The Buster if I get, Sword. If I get it right, I can cover Andy's face up yeah, and no, finally I'll, take I'll just, over the show like I've I'll, always wanted. I'll just leave, shall I? I bought a Buster Sword. That's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's a shame you didn't get that out on our Crisis Core episode. I didn't actually have it then. I know, but that's what I mean. You, I, I know. Well, you should I, have. I got so obsessed with um, Final Fantasy VII after playing Crisis Core again that I had to buy it. <laughs> it is awesome. It is awesome. Oh... I'll, I'll find a place for it in the background somewhere. Yeah. Although we're quite close to a wall. So. That, that was my first suggestion. I was like, that needs to go in the in the set. You even actually sent me a Photoshop picture. I actually it. photoshopped it into the, <laughs> <laughs> into the set. I was like, this is where it could live. Uh, and sadly, I just want to report back on um, the fact that you've not completed Crisis Core yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> How many Why? weeks ago was that? <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Uh, because I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, on the... On the Steam Deck. Steam Deck. I know. But that's not what we're talking about today. Kind well, of is. We're, we're going to be touching on that. Yeah, okay. But this episode yeah. is all about Hogwarts Legacy on the Switch. Indeed. Yes, because obviously, you know, there's some controversial... Well, firstly, you you touched upon this in a short video, uh, not an actual YouTube short, but a shorter video okay, on yeah. 128KB yeah. on Hogwarts on the Switch. Yeah. Uh and it got a bit of flack. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to kind of address it in a bit more detail. Indeed, yes. And for the people that haven't seen that are over here, mm. they get to see us talking about it. Yeah, you exactly. Know, so, well, it goes back even further to another video I did. Where Indeed. Because I covered this originally. So let's, let's wind it back to the beginning, right? Okay. So originally, it was just, we all thought it was like next gen only, Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, definitely. Right? And then about a year ago, all of a sudden they updated their website with a little Nintendo Switch icon. So I went, what? And, you know, put up a video going, Hogwarts on Switch, how? Or yeah. something like that. It's got it's got like 200,000 views or something. Yeah. You know, and it, it went crazy. And people were like, oh, yeah, well, you know, downgrade, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But, but the, the reaction was no one expected it to be on Switch. They never said it originally. I definitely didn't expect it. No, to exactly. So my whole video was like, wow, it's going to be on Switch. How are they going to do this? And it was a discussion of that. Yeah. Is it going to be cloud? Is it not? Now fast forward, you know, quite a long time, a year, and we are getting it on Switch. It has been confirmed, and now it has been delayed. So it's currently out on PC, Xbox, and PS5, Yeah, you know, but it's going to be available on PS4 and whatever the previous generation Xbox was. No, nobody knows that actually owns it. <laughs> um, that's also been delayed, but only for like a couple of months, I think. But yeah. the Switch version has been delayed until July this year, which basically gives it four or five months roughly you know for them to, so the, the to first, bring it over the first point then i guess is that the switch version as well as the past generation console versions mm-hmm. have been delayed yes but switch version by longer yeah so firstly that tells you that it's not just a straight cloud version some kind of rehash exactly, it's it's yeah. They're doing some extra development work yeah. to get to this point. And the good thing as well, if we just sidetrack and look at Cyberpunk, yeah. right? CD Projekt Red released it on everything at the same day. Yeah. And it was like, pfft, you yes. know, it sucked yeah. on the older generation consoles. Luckily, Avalanche and Warner Brothers games have gone, no, 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 we're, we're delaying it. You know, and I'm well for transparency and the fact that they care. Yeah. Because to me, that says... We are actually going to optimize these yeah. and bring them later so that you have a better experience. So, yes, they have been delayed. The cyberpunk analogy is a really good one mm. because that was an absolute train wreck oh, from the off. It took them so long to Do regenerate. you know, I've got a PS5 now. Yep. I've got a copy of Cyberpunk so and I still I. haven't played it because there's a hangover that yeah. I'm like, it's broken. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For me, it's like the longer I wait... Yeah. the more updated it's going to be yeah. and the better my experience. We is both it, bought it yeah. at the same time. We've both got a sealed copy, yeah. haven't we? Is Waiting it still broken? Pro- yeah. I don't know. I won't try. Yeah, it's not. I, apparently, it's really good now. But, you know, still, it had a bad rap and now it's given it a reputation yeah. that it sucks. And that's what we don't want with Hogwarts Legacy. It's great to see the devs and the, and the publishers willing to take a hit mm. and go, no, we're going to make sure it's right for yes. PS4 and Xbox yep. and then for Switch as well. Potentially Switch, The yeah. fact 
that's just it. Just say the fact that it's coming to Switch and not as a cloud version, yeah, is phenomenal. Yeah, after seeing it uh, on PS5 yep. and seeing it on your Steam Deck, yep. to be able to get obviously it's gonna be massively downgraded in areas, yeah, yeah. but to be able to get that game, yeah, on oh, a, on Switch hardware, yeah, is a feat in itself. It really is unreal. And, and if they manage that, which I'm sure they will, we'll like touch on that. But if they manage that, that is going to be like a yeah. real accomplishment and that's the thing as well is like you know i put out that video the other day literally like a week ago whenever it was after playing the ps5 version yeah and the steam deck version and yeah okay the thumbnail and title are a little bit you know sparking for some people but it's youtube it's youtube and the whole point is like i'm actually for them and behind them being able to accomplish this. Yeah. So my whole video, I say, yes, okay, I've played the PS5 version, it's really good. I've played the Steam Deck version, it's really good. And trying to compare the Steam Deck to the Switch, which you can't really do, is is you know, it's, it's not the same. Yeah. But you know, the fact that it runs on Steam Deck pretty freaking well, you know, gives me faith that in four or five months, the, the time that they're going to spend to actually optimize. I really do think that it will be able to be playable on Switch. Yeah. To what the, level, I'm not sure, but the um, the comparisons or the the flack for um, people perceived that you were criticising that it will be of a, a different quality on the Switch. Yeah, there's two takes. So the first one was that yeah, people perceived that it would be and, uh, and clearly not because what we're actually saying is if you look at the PS5 version compared to the Steam Deck version. Mm. They're different yeah, in, in ways, yeah, in yeah. performance, yeah, yeah. In, in in some way, probably the aesthetics as yeah, well. Yeah, totally. But that's fine mm. because PS5 players are expecting a different experience than Steam yeah, Deck players. You've got a home console, not a tiny little system in your exactly. hand. Exactly. <laughs> so, and the same is true for the Nintendo Switch players. Us Switch players are not expectant of the same next gen quality as PS5 exactly. games. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's a completely different exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, that you don't buy a Nintendo Switch for 8k no 300 hertz gaming uh, of course that not. is not the case no at all so, so so i'm i'm acceptant of the differences and in fact i embrace those differences because I, I think it's a great thing that an awesome game yeah and this is going to be a generational game this is going to be a game like the final fantasy 7 and 8 kind of generational games mm. that people will be talking about in 10 years oh time. yeah yeah There's, they've done some real magic <laughs> the fact that we can get that kind of uh, groundbreaking a game on as many systems as possible totally. so everyone can play it. Yeah, yeah. That's phenomenal. Yes, it's different on each system. Yeah, of course it is. Mm. And that's a good mm. thing because mm. it means Switch players get to play it. Yep. Now, what was the other take? Well, yeah, there's actually two extra ones. One of them was that I was basically trying to say that the Steam Deck version was better or like justify yeah. the Steam Deck or something. It was like this whole video is about how I think it will be manageable on Switch because I've played another handheld version. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know? I've seen the difference from handheld to console. Yeah, and if you actually watch a video, I use, yes, I show B-roll of the Steam Deck running it because yeah. that's what I've got. I'm not just going to show you the trailer for five minutes. It doesn't exist on Switch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that is the other thing was people were like, I thought you'd played it. I was like, it doesn't it's exist. six months away yet. Like, what? And people were like, yeah, well, we thought you had a review code really? I'm not Linus Tech Tips. <laughs> and if even if I did, do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be able to show it. No. It would be under NDA for another five months. Do you uh, know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, I'd be willing to bet that uh, a proper playable version doesn't exist yet. Yeah, exactly. That, that far yeah. off. And immediately in the video, I say about it being delayed for five mon months. Yeah. And that's the whole discussion yeah. point. So it's not like I'm egging you on saying that I've played it. So, so I don't get people's takes there, but whatever. Let's make a couple of predictions then mm. with it. And we can base these predictions quite kind of accurately off of the difference between the Steam Deck version and the PlayStation version. Mm. And, and you've experienced both detailed, hands-on yeah, yeah. versions. So if you look at the differences there, you can then take a step down and look at what potentially the problems will be for the Switch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The it's... biggest thing is open world. Yeah. So just before we get there, because some people are still saying, yeah, but what if it is still cloud version? And some people are like, yeah, well, I can imagine they might even like stop, like ditch the game. Like, no, this is one of the biggest best-selling games already yeah. of any launch. They're leaning like, they're, they're going to lean into it. Like you said earlier, put it on as many systems as possible. Yeah. They're not going to cancel the Switch version. They're not. No. Because they'll make a lot of money. And delaying it that long, yes, for an optimization thing is good. But it also then 
makes all the people that have played the PS5 version what and was, the Xbox version buy it again. Well, I can't remember. Was it 100 million Switches were out there at the end of... There's over 100 million Switches. It's now the third best-selling console of all time. It's overtaken... So there's more Switch players than there are PlayStation 5 players. Oh, yeah. So they're not going to abandon it. No, of course not. Because so the market's bigger. Yeah. They're definitely going to... It's all money, isn't it? Yeah. So they're 100% going to put it out there. I've already seen people that are like, I've got it on Xbox, I'm going to buy it again on Switch. So they're going to be doubling up the yep. sales, you know. Um, and the other thing is, it's not going to be a cloud version because otherwise that would be out already. Yeah. Because you don't need Switch hardware optimization because it's running on a server somewhere and you're streaming it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. th th that's out of the question too. This is going to be a physical port and I'll eat my shorts like Bart Simpson if that's the case and because it, it won't be. Yeah. This is absolutely going to be a native port. Just like The Witcher 3, as everyone keeps telling me. Yeah, yeah, they uh, did that yeah. in 2015, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, that's it. So looking at the Switch version and what might be the case with it is definitely just downgraded everything. You yeah. know, like the foliage is going to be less. The resolution is going to be massively less. And that's where I love the Switch. I absolutely love the Switch, you know. But there's still limitations. And of an open world game of this magnitude, the resolution, just like on the Witcher's version before it got updated and blah, 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 it's still very mushy. You there's, know? A, there's a really easy comparison to make. And it's a much smaller budget game, but a big franchise. Mm. And it's the recent Sonic game. Yeah. Frontiers, was it? Sonic Frontiers, yeah. Uh, the open world sections of that game, Yep. they don't look great. No. There's a lot of popping. Yep. The... Um, the foliage, the the detail in it, it's really low poly. Count mm. it, it, everything's a little bit mushy, yeah. a little bit poor performing, especially when you're moving quickly, like you will be when you yeah, mount yeah. a broom yeah, and you're yeah, flying. Yeah. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. The texture and everything's going to go low res. Yeah. But when you enter a zone, mm. when you enter an area, a free rendered like area, yeah. And again, say so Sonic's a really good example yeah, of that. Yes. I, um, I think I used that in the video yeah, we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, and before this, we were also talking about the Metroid Prime the remake. Recent, yeah, the recent remaster. Yeah. Remaster. Um, that looks phenomenal because it's closed areas, isn't it? So yeah. they've got to render or pre render one area at a time. Rather and then than a, a whole screen. open world. Yeah. Now, I also said, I wonder if in the open world area, they'll put in kind of. I don't want to say stopping blocks, but like loading sections. Mm, mm. So you brought up a good um, and like reference earlier. Anyone that's old <laughs> <laughs> like us that played Half Life, Half you know, yeah, Half Life and Two. Even though that's not open world, no, still had that issue. You can it. It was very big areas at one time, mm, and yes. you could see ahead, but you would hit like this invisible light, and the game would pause for a second and go yep. loading. Yeah. And then you'd load and then into you, the next yeah. area. So you can see, it's not like a yeah. door or anything like mm -hmm. that. You're like, I'm going over there. And you go, uh, loading. And then it, after a few seconds, then you would keep going. I, I can't see them doing that. No. Like they might, they very well might, especially which we'll talk about in a sec about the door thing. Yeah. They might do that. I think there'll be a lot of flack for doing that because that is an old school technique that yeah. people have kind of, no one's really done that anymore. It, it breaks it, the experience. It really breaks the immersion, like really does. It's understandable when you go in and out of somewhere. Yeah. It's kind of expect it. But when you're just open world, imagine playing Breath of the Wild, Zelda. Yeah. And then you just go, and then you keep running. You'll yeah. be like, man, that sucks. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So they, they could do that. And that would be a really good way of making the game look nicer because they could then render like areas but I think that's a way too much effort for them to essentially like block the game off to do. Uh, and I, I just think they're going to leave it as it is, but it's just going to be much lower resolution, like adaptive resolution. Here's a thought. What if it's completely different? Well, yeah, people were saying that in the comments to me as well. You and brought up Breath of the Wild and that made me think it's not past the history of Nintendo to have the franchise on the game and it's yeah. completely different yes yeah, maybe it's not as extreme as that but maybe the art is like maybe it's completely redrawn yeah oh well it's a good like counterpoint but i i just don't see Do you think they'll have yeah. too much backlash yeah. if they did that not just that they, they would effectively have to remake the whole game like you know and they, even though it's known that it's going to sell really well and blah 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 i don't think they could do that like looking back let's take harry potter games from the movies yeah you know 
back in the day in freaking late 90s, early yeah. 2000s, whatever, you would get the Game Boy Advance version, which would be an entire game in its own right. You'd get the PlayStation version, yeah. own game in its own right, all made by the same studio, most likely. Yeah. And you'd have the GameCube version or whatever it was, console it was, and they're all individual units. And someone said that in a comment, like, what if it's a different version? Yeah. It's like, it's a good point, but I think we're way past that since... I've touched on this before because people were like, why did they have different versions? It's like, well, they all had their own hardware. So, you know, the GameCube was a different architecture and everything and, else <clears> at the <throat> PlayStation, whereas now they're all the same. They're just mini PCs, aren't yeah. they? Yes. And, like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the game development engines in the past were closed to those systems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas for the past, well, when was I working in games? Like 15 years ago, mm -hmm. you started seeing the advent of Unreal and of Unity and they are cross-platform development engines. Yeah, So yeah, you, yeah. you build inside this thing and you literally then, what am I porting it to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Rather than uh, having to build it again for the next system. Exactly, yeah. 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 So I don't think that's going to be the case. I mean, it would be very, very interesting if they made that decision. But to me, it's going to be a Witcher clone. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They're just going to downgrade it. Yeah. There you go. And, and I think that's fine because, again, on Switch... As long as it's like a solid 30 FPS, you're fine. It doesn't matter if it's 160p. What is more... <laughs> that's a really interesting question, a little segue. Yeah. What is more forgivable in game performance? Um, frame rate issues or like aesthetic problems like popping or low poly textures and stuff. What would you say is more forgivable for the gameplay experience? So I've got a really, really strong opinion on it. Yeah, okay. Um, I would say it needs to be locked frame rate with, an, with an adaptive resolution. As soon as frame rate starts chugging, mm. as soon as it gets below 25 frames per second... Oh, yeah, you're stuttering you and you're stuttering. freezing. And, which uh, Hogwarts has um, uh, been like it, having issues with, by the way. The yeah. Xbox versions have been terrible. If you watch Digital Foundry's video on it, because they're wizards, you know. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I didn't even mean that pun, but there you go, have one yeah, of those. Yeah. Uh, you know, they compare the PS5 version to the Xbox version yeah. and then all 20 million presets that you can change or yeah. whatever. And they say basically it's really good on PS5, but the Xbox version has some serious issues and they show examples. And I've even experienced it on the Steam Deck when I was adjusting my settings because I did a video about yes, here's the best did, settings, yeah. you know, when it came out. And you go into an area and it's like, it drops down to like 10 FPS, you know. Yeah. And then when it comes back to that solid 30 you're all good. And mm. it wouldn't matter if the walls are changing resolution because when you're locked into that frame rate, it, it's so much better. It's just like with video, you know, like 100%. the audio has to be the number one. Yeah. Video quality is the second. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, frame rate breaks your immersion, whereas yeah. poor graphics or like low poly count or even popping textures and stuff, it's just more, it doesn't break your immersion into that world as much yeah. as if it starts freezing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say if it drops below 30, then you start to get problems. Yeah, visually. yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I, I personally would much rather take a locked FPS even at 30. Yes. I know there's so many people that are like, 30, I can't even play at 30. Oh, I get it, I get it. I get that too, yeah. totally understand. But on a handheld system, I think aiming for 30 FPS, yeah. you know, is fine. And even playing Switch docked, 30 FPS, I'm all right with, yeah. you know, no problems. Even, I've been playing at 30 FPS on Steam Deck. Now that there's been some updates and stuff, I've now been doing it at 40 fps and locking it off at 40 because that's possible on the steam deck and that's been nice you know but 30 is totally playable so i think it is going to be a case of they're going to try and aim for 30 fps yeah hopefully with this amount of time that they've got they can actually lock that in and sort of bypass these issues that other systems have been having and they've been patching hopefully they get it locked at 30 and that adaptive resolution is just going to go all over the place, whether you're yeah. inside in a small room or outside in the open world. I definitely think the open world is going to be a Sonic situation, yes. unlike Witcher, where it's going to go real low. There's going to be like no foliage, probably like uh, NPCs and uh, enemies are probably going to be very sort of like low distance view. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there might be some pop in with certain characters, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Will they introduce the fog? Yes, oh, they should get the Silent Hill fog. Get and, the Silent Hill fog out, and then yeah. it's forgivable. I can only see five meters. <sighs> yes, yeah, the fog. That's the fog. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I'd I'd forgive that. Silent Hill was yeah. incredible, absolutely great. I still can't play it because of the fog. 
No, because of the fear. <laughs> right. There's a few games the fear that, of the that fog. <laughs> give me the fear. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's one of them. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that and great. when we replayed Resident Evil 2. Yeah. That when, gave me the fear. Yeah, that gave me the fear when you died before you could even <laughs> to walk. I forgot about that. <laughs> How do I walk? Oh, I'm getting in. <laughs> uh, for those of you that haven't followed us for a long time, we used to stream games occasionally retro games and retro um, games, yeah. yeah we thought we'd bust out resident evil 2 i <laughs> hadn't played it since i was a kid and i died on the first screen i think i died twice and i was laughing because i've played that game a lot and <laughs> i was like so, i don't even know how to move <laughs> yeah it was it was incredible yeah but yeah i mean to me i think again reiterating my point which everyone clearly didn't watch the video on <laughs> I think it's totally plausible that this is actually going to work. Yeah. To what level, of course, is another thing. This game is not obviously playing to the Switch's strengths at at all. all. It's the complete opposite. You know, the Switch was not designed for open world massive games like this, and it's a AAA game. However, seeing how well, like, the game runs on PS5 and even on PC, you know, after some updates and stuff... um, I do have faith that actually they care about this game. And, I think they care about it. And yeah. I think they want people to have the best experience they can. And I said in the other video, if you've got any other way of playing it, it's probably better to play it in some other way. However, yeah. for a handheld experience that you could take anywhere and dock on the TV. Now you've got... Uh, I think it's going to be good. Your, your wife, Christina, plays it on the PlayStation and you mm. play it on the Steam Deck yeah. slash PC. Yeah, yeah. Currently, mm. are the saves local or are they cloud-based? Uh, on Steam Deck, everything's cloud. It's the safe house cloud based on Steam Deck, but is it? Is there like a Avalanche slash no. WB? No, no, no. It's system login. locked. You can't. I can't play on PC and it then would play be on PS5. So cool. Yeah, cross platform. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got it on my PlayStation. Oh, I'm gonna get it on my Switch as well. Yep. And I can pick up my save file. And that is what everyone was asking for pre-release. And so they, cool. They were like, "There's no cross save because no. that's what Witcher Three. Again, we're bringing it up." That has got um, cross-platform save. So yeah. I could play on my PC because I also own it on PC and and yeah. uh, Switch. So I could play it on PC and then pick it up on my Switch and carry on. Yeah. But that doesn't have it. And that's kind of partly the reason why I went and got the PC version because I can play on my PC yeah. like a full ultra everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I can go, you know what? Steam Deck, same save. Yeah. But I couldn't do that if I was playing on the PS5. You can't cross-platform save. That's not enough of sucks. that. Sucks. Yeah. Every game that's multi-platform, I think, should just allow that. Yeah, you know, I think it but should. But it, it does take um, it does take them running a server, hosting a server. So they've got money. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the inevitable problem, isn't there? In yeah, five yeah. years, everyone starts kicking off that my save file's yeah. been deleted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they've true. switched off the server. True, but you know, <clears throat> it w- that would be lovely. And if they ever update it, that would be very cool because. There's so many people, like I said earlier, that are yeah. going to be playing the, the Xbox version or the PlayStation version right now yeah, and that want to p- pick it up on Switch so they can play anywhere. Yeah, totally. And how cool would that be to just load up your save you yeah. know, and carry on? And to do a bit of grinding with yeah. my character. And then yeah. come back and go on the TV. But sa- sadly, that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, but I agree. There's, there needs to be more of that, totally. So what do you think? What's your predictions for Hogwarts exactly. Legacy on the Switch? Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Totally. Um, and if you're listening to us on the podcast platforms, uh, you can't let us know, but you can let us know how much you love us. Yes. By rating the podcast. Yes. Or, did there. or, you know, like rating the podcast and then tweeting at us. Or, tweet at us. Or then... Yes, tweet at us. We've or, got Twitter. You know, yeah. And, you know, watch the podcast, then go watch the YouTube video, the same video, comment there, then go on Facebook, <clears throat> comment on there. On Show how page. much you actually love yeah. us. And yeah, then follow right. us on Twitter. Yeah. Just to, yeah. The, the, write us a letter. You could write us a letter, yeah. I'm All not going to give things. out my address. But <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could write us a letter. But anyway, um, there we go. Yeah. Uh, if you really, really haven't got enough of us, then you can have five, ten minutes of Andy boring you about everything about Nintendo. Yeah. Or probably. just read the title and thumbnail and comment something that I discuss in the video anyway. Don't even watch the video. <laughs> just comment angry stuff. <laughs> and do the same thing here on a PlayStation video too. Do it. Um, thanks for joining us. And of course, we'll see you next week for another 128KB podcast. Bye.